everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to another live stream, another um, fun class. What is going on here with my thing? Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I am super excited for this class. Um, I have been wanting to paint these bubbles for a while. Um, actually I can just do this. That is what it's supposed to be. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I've been excited to paint these for a while. I've seen these done a bunch of different ways, a bunch of different times. Um, and I'm just excited to kind of figure out our own way of doing it. And I have a couple of tips and tricks uh, for getting those perfect little circles, um, even without a traceable. Um, but let me just go over some of the supplies. I'll go over the traceable, go over the supplies um, if you are using a traceable. And, um, and then we'll just get going. We are gonna paint our canvas entirely black. So if you haven't done that or you're not using a black canvas, that is totally fine. We are starting from a blank, regular white canvas. Um, so don't worry if you haven't uh, prepped your canvas or anything like that, okay? Um, so to start, we are using a, um, a 11 by 14 Frederick's canvas. They sent me a bunch of these and they were very kind. Um, about that and can I just say that I love these canvases. I've used your Michael canvases and your your Hobby Lobby canvases and all those sort, sorts of things and I just being able to have a good framed canvas is like really nice. So um, I'll be mentioning this later in the video as well um, but I do have a Valentine um, giveaway going on right now for a pack of Frederick's canvases. So if you have never used these before or you want a free pack of canvases, um, they are sponsoring that and they were really kind to, um, and they're gonna be sending a pack of canvases to the winner. So go on to my Facebook and that is where you can um, learn how to enter in the contest. Um, and it's just a random raffle win away, um, raffle, giveaway um, and yeah so that's really cool uh, so that's what I'm using today it does not have to be Frederick's if you don't have one but just whatever whatever honestly this one would probably look good on a round canvas for you know uh, it'd probably look good on any canvas um, so use what you have and I'm sure that it will be great so but I'm using 11 by 14 in my patron I have a traceable for a um, a 9 by 12 which is what this one is um, as well as the um, the 11 by 14 now if you are going to be using a traceable here's what I would recommend there's two ways that you can do this you can put on the traceable now and when you are painting it black just leave a tiny little sliver where um, essentially paint around all of your lines um, now for someone who doesn't know how, doesn't want to paint the, um, the circles, that's a really good, uh, way to do it. And it's actually kind of therapeutic being, being able to paint around everything. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you can paint it all black and then you can get some, uh, just some regular white transfer paper and then you can, um, transfer it that way as well. 
The other option um, that we are going to be doing today and what I'm going to be teaching today um, is you're going to have to grab some cups and things like that. So I have here a glass uh, jar or mug. Um, this is my, my medium sized and then I also have a just a regular um, cup. So I have these two sizes and then I have two smaller sizes. I have a smaller little um, jar of some sort. I think these came in, if you've ever gone to Costco and gotten the, um, they have like these little desserts. They come in these. I've seen other people keep these too, so I know I'm not the only one that has this exact cup. Um, but I use these for my watercolors um, as well, so there's probably why there's like still watercolor in them. Um, but you can have that. And then if you don't have those, I also have just like a little cap um, for the smaller, tiny little bubbles. Um, that's gonna be helpful. So if you do not have anything like that, you can draw them on and that's totally fine too. Um, but it is gonna be harder to get that perfect circle look without something that's already like pre-made. You can do stencils, um, you can draw a circle out of a piece of paper, um, and you could use that to get that circle. So there's a lot of different options that you can use for getting a perfect circle without a traceable or even without glass jars. Um, but I'm going to be using the glass jar method and the little, little cap that I have. Um, if it's not glass, you are going to want to make sure that after we're done doing that portion of it that you do wipe it off or go wash it out um, because acrylic paint tends to stick to things um, <laughs> so you're going to want to have to just make sure that everything's clean before you sit through the whole class um, and I will I'll give a little time for you guys to to um, clean off because I'm going to go clean off mine as well so that'll give we'll do that together okay um, as always let me know if you guys have any questions in the comment section. If it is a question directed um, at me, make sure to use a little at symbol because um, it highlights my name for me. Um, so just Samantha Anderson Artist. Um, if you at me, it will draw my attention to the chat box and I can answer any questions you have, okay? Um, for the colors, we have a um, an ultramarine blue. I have a bright green. I have a medium yellow. This one's technically pale green, but it's not actually pale. Um, I say this every time I use this. I'm like, well, it's not really pale, but that's what the color is. Um, yeah, it's a very bright green. And then I have my orange. And then I do have a non hippie crafter. I have a, I have a Liquitex one that is a very bright pink and that looks orange there. I don't know why it's orange. Um, this is more of the color. Why is that so different? I need to change. I've changed it before, um, and I don't know why it comes out orange. Um, maybe it's on a different template that I have it. Let me go ahead and change this color so it's actually accurate for you guys. All right, and it's only with this pink that I noticed that the color's off. So I'm just gonna, it looks orange here. It looks like coral, but it's definitely not coral. Um, that is better. Okay, that's closer. I don't wanna, I don't wanna go too off because then the other colors might look off and I don't want that either. So I need the balance. Okay, enough on the technical side, guys. All right, um, yeah, so those are the colors and then obviously you're gonna have, wanna have your, your black and your white, okay? Um, that's pretty much it for the colors. And then, Yep, you're black and white. And then for brushes, you can honestly use whatever brushes you have. Um, I'm using a um, Filbert for the background, although I might use might use a bigger one. Nah, I probably won't. I'll just use this one. Um, it's really just putting a thick layer of black and allowing that to dry. We're gonna be doing that first before we before I even go over my announcements because we do need to let that have time to dry before we go in with our other um, parts of the class because if we don't, then it's just gonna get all black and muddy and nobody wants that. We want these colors to be vibrant and bright and in doing so, we have to wait for our background to dry. So, um, 
Other materials that you might want to have on hand, of course, is your water, your paper towel, your palette. Um, and then I have a palette knife for uh, mixing colors, but honestly, I don't think I'm going to be mixing many colors in here because I do have, I'm probably going to be using a lot of these bright colors because I don't really want to dull them down any. Um, the only one I might mix is maybe the pink, but I kind of want to use that brightness. And honestly, the pink on the black, it might be that color anyways. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions before we get started. Um, and let's just, let's go. Um, let's go ahead and start with our black. And if you guys have any questions, you can, you can, um, do that. Um, okay. Let's start with our black. I'm just going in. If you're wondering what kind of black I'm using, I'm just using Mars black. I would say that ivory black is actually my favorite black. Um, but if you have the Hippie Crafter acrylics um, kit, then um, Mars black is going to be the black that they give you. Which honestly, if the blacks aren't like right next to each other, I don't think I would even really notice a difference. I just know from experience that the ivory black has a bluer, cooler tint. And I feel like it's truer to black versus a Mars black has a very um, like dark brown feel to it. Like a super, super dark brown just because it's on the warmer side. Let me know in the comments if you have a favorite black or if you use a different black. I'm sure that there's other blacks out there too, but maybe I don't even know. I feel like you probably hear mostly about the ivory black and the um, ivory black and Mars black. When I'm going over this, you want to make sure um, that if you do go into your water to make it, you know, a little bit more movable on your canvas that you're not using too much because I'm only doing one coat of this. And if you're doing two coats, that's totally fine. You don't really have to worry about this because it's going to cover up anything that you miss. But because I'm only doing one coat, I really want to make sure that I don't miss anything and I get in all those crevices. And if I if I have too much water, then it's gonna be see-through and I don't want it to be see-through. If you're working with a small brush like I am in comparison to how big the canvas is, I typically like to do um, little sections at a time instead of just putting a whole bunch of, you know, um, paint on and moving trying to move it around I feel that it tends to be a little bit more even if I do little sections at a time so I'll get paint I'll put it on this section right here make sure it's in all the little crevices and then I'll go over the whole thing work my way up make sure there's no big globs of, of anything. And because of where my reflection is of um, my light, I often won't see things. So I'm going to just look and make sure that I got it all. I'm just going to move to the bottom half.
Does anyone else like find painting a canvas all one color therapeutic? So you don't have to think about it. You don't have to think about colors or gradients or brush strokes. <laughs> You're just painting. It's like so satisfying. I'm gonna grab it by the top because I painted that first. All right, so now that that is all finished, we're gonna have to wait for this to dry fully before we um, before we do our next step. So I'm gonna go over some, I'm gonna rinse out my brush firsthand. And I have two things of water, so I am using my second thing of water to rinse this out so that I can still have clean water um, for the rest of my class. Um, super handy to have. All right, so that is all cleaned out. I wanna go over a couple um, just quick announcements for upcoming classes, for classes that I've done in Patreon and all sorts of things and the contest. Um, okay. So first things first is this class that we did live here on the channel last week. It was super fun. Um, if you have not done this class yet and you love palm trees or you love sunsets or you struggle with clouds, any one of those, um, make sure you go check this class out. It was a lot of fun. It was fairly simple. I hope I was hoping to put clouds in a in a simple way to create them. I know clouds sometimes people struggle with them and I just wanted to do a class where it just was easier like um so you'll have to do it and let me know if it if yours came out the way you, you thought it would or if it was easier than you thought it would or if it was harder um let me know because I love doing these types of classes where we really do focus on one thing so the majority of the class is focused on the background and the clouds and then we do a couple palm trees at the end um, just to kind of round everything out and I thought it turned out really nice um, I, I will say somebody mentioned this they're like oh I wish you know I'll probably do more oranges and pinks in mine and um, it was funny because I told them that when I was done with the class or well like in the middle of the class if I wasn't 
in a live class, I might have done a second coat or changed it. But by the time I realized that the colors, they all needed, it all, everything needed to be pinker. <laughs> it was too late in the live class for me to change it. Um, because I started looking at the colors of the clouds and they were really, they had pink and, and I still kept some of it in there. Um, but the pink didn't match the sky because the sky didn't have enough pink and orange in it anyways. Um, so I ended up just doing a little bit more cooler tones in the clouds. But if I were to do this again, I would definitely add pink and orange to more of everything, even the blue sky. So um, like everything. And I told them that I was like, oh, maybe I'll do like a, like a wash. Um, but I ended up just keeping it like this because I do like it. Um, if I'm not looking at or remembering what I painted it from, <laughs> I'm like, I really like it. When I look at the reference, then I'm just like, ah, it's not as, you know, sunset-y as, as the other one is. Um, but it was, it, was, it was a fun class. So if you haven't done that and you like doing clouds or um, like skies and things like that, that would be a fun one to do. Um, the other thing is, of course, the, um, the contest, the giveaway that's going on right now. So please go on to my Facebook page. You can do this while you're waiting I'll go ahead and post a um a link to it I will post a link right here that is the link to my Facebook page it's just if you look up Samantha Anderson artist pretty much anywhere Google or Facebook um you will you'll find it um and that is where the I will pin it after this class I'll pin it to the top it should be like one or two posts down um but make sure that you do all the things and follow me and Fredericks um, and then you can be entered, okay? Um, make sure you read the rules and everything because it is US only um, due to shipping stuff. Uh, but yeah, that is super fun. Super excited about that. Um, in Patreon, if you like this class because of all of the fun color, um, then you'll need to join um, Patreon because this is what we painted at the beginning of the month we painted this really really fun colorful um, elephant and it was so much fun it was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be uh, but it turns out to be one of my favorite paintings that I've done this year uh, and even I don't know within the last year I feel like it's just it's really grown on me and I love the style um, but yeah, I, I would call this abstract realism. So it looks like an elephant. You know it's an elephant. It's the sizing of an elephant. But the colors are obviously very abstract. Um, but they're colorful and I love it. Um, so if you want to do this, that is in my Patreon. And yeah, you can find that on my page as well. And then lastly, the last one I want to share is in my Patreon at the highest tier. We go more in depth with our classes. Um, and obviously I'm still waiting for this to dry. Um, but yeah, we go more in depth with our classes and we do a set of classes over the course of the month. So I do about an hour, hour and 15 minute, um, kind of like a group private live in my Patreon and we do it every week until it's done. Um, the longest it's taken is four weeks, but this is what we're doing currently and it's Yosemite Valley. It's it's a picture of Half Dome, um, and I am so excited about it. So two weeks ago, we did pretty much the sky, and then um, all the blue, and then this week we finished off the trees and stuff that are closer, and the grasses, and we put in all the rocks. So I think we'll probably only do one more session on this, and we're gonna put in all the all the water and the grass in the front. I'm super excited for it because I think it's just turning out really, really nice. Um, so if you like landscapes like this and you want to go more in depth in your paintings and maybe take a little bit more of a relaxed approach instead of trying to hammer it out in these two hour classes, then that is definitely a fun, a fun way to do it. Um, and you can either join me live or you can paint it after. So you don't have to join live. Um, all my classes, just like the ones here on YouTube and the Patreon, all of them are recorded and saved 
and you can always go back um, and do that. Um, one thing I wanted to mention with the uh, the giveaway is that I am giving away f access to three of my Patreon classes for my Magenta tier. So if you win the giveaway, not only will you get a pack of canvases, but you'll also get to choose, you get to choose three classes that I've done exclusively for Patreon Magenta tier and you'll be able to say I want to paint these three classes and I'll give you access to just those classes and that will be fantastic. Okay, um, so that's really fun. I'm hoping that this is close to being done. I see um, a way that you can tell whether or not it's um, dry or not is you can lift it up into the light and you can kind of, if it's really, really, really glossy, then it's probably still wet. If it's kind of a little glossy, then it's probably half dry and you can work with it. Um, and then obviously if it's not as, like this is all dry up here, but I do have a section right here that's still a little bit glossy and right here. Um, so let me go over kind of the two different ways that you can do this. Um, you can get like a piece of chalk or um, like a some sort of like a white pencil, um, like a white chalk pencil or something like that. And you can, you can use these without painting on them. So the, the way that I'm going to be doing it is I'm going to put paint on the outside and I'm just going to dab it and that's going to leave a white or orange depending on what I choose um, or whatever colors you, you could put different colors on it you could put whatever colors you want on it <laughs> um, that will leave just a very fairly light um, circle um, for you to then base your bubble off of um, and then the other way or yeah, so that's the second way. That's the way that I'm going to be doing it So you can either draw it on um, You could probably draw it on with a pencil, but you won't be able to see it very well because it's a black canvas uh, so Yeah, it's kind of this one's kind of a choose your own adventure because there's so many different routes that you can go um, But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get my white out white out and some of my different colors because I was going to put white on it and now I'm thinking maybe I want to do orange and some of the other colors because the, these bubbles specifically, I like hand chose this bubble <laughs> because I just loved all the colors in it. So maybe I'll do orange. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to have fun with color. Um... I'm gonna get out all my colors. So I'm gonna get out white. The one thing that you do want to make sure that you do <coughs> is that you paint all of the bubbles relatively the same because bubbles take on whatever surroundings it's surrounded by and being able to have all of them the same is what creates that because they're all reflecting the same thing so um so when you do paint on the tops of it you'll want to try to paint them the same as much as you can does that make sense um so i'm gonna go ahead and get out my colors okay Okay, so I have my white. I think I'm this one. I think this yellow is almost done. Denzo. Um, a little bit of orange. You're not gonna need like a whole lot of color. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of my pink. I think I might just keep my pink here. I don't think I. I don't think I want to taint it. A little bit of blue and a little bit of green. Okay. Can you see? Okay, yes, you can see it. I'm just going to move this over just a little bit. Alright, so you can see all my colors. Looks like a rainbow. 
It's very nice. I'm going to grab a couple different brushes so that I don't have to like rinse them out a whole bunch. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do orange on it, but I'm going to add a little bit of white to my orange. And a little bit of yellow to my orange. Just so it's a little bit brighter. White will lighten it, but it will also take out the color. It'll make it a little bit less saturated. Um, so adding that yellow back in will make it pop a little bit more. All right, and let me kind of show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna grab this I'm going to grab this one and I'm just going to put this on the tip of it. I'm going to paint the tip of it. And then I'm going to figure out where I want it. And there you go. And I think I only have, I think I only have one of the big ones is what I'm choosing to do. If you want to do more than that, that's totally fine. I'm just going to take this and just wipe it off. Acrylic comes off of glass pretty easily, even if it's dried. So I'm not worried about, um, that one specifically. It's more of this one that I'm worried about. All right, so next I'm going to do the medium sized one. And I'm gonna put just a tad bit more on it. Eh, I mean, not a whole lot. Cause I'm gonna do this this one more than once. All right, put this one over here, and let's see how many I can get out of here. All right, so you can see it didn't come out as well. But I think that's still okay. Okay. Um, okay. I think there's two of that one. And I'm just kind of wiping mine off. And now I'm going to do the next size down. So I'm going to do this one. There's one right here. So I'm just kind of re-putting on that. Oh, 
this is fun. <laughs> it's like stamping. Okay, I'm going to do two up here. One right here. And I'm having the urge to like twist it and I I know that I don't need to do that. All you got to do is stamp it. You don't need to twist. All right. So I'm just wiping that off. And then last but not least, I have this little cap that I'm going to do the tiny ones in. And I feel like I even need a smaller one. Like maybe I need a smaller cap. Hmm. Do I have any smaller caps? Ooh. You know what? I do. Let's see. Um. <sighs> All right, I have the cap of a glue stick I'm gonna use because I think I think I want it smaller than than this one. I could do one of those, but I wanted it. I wanted it, I wanted little tiny bubbles in there. Um, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna do it. This is kind of hard because <laughs> I'm painting orange on orange and I can't really tell. <laughs> I can't really tell where I have painted it. Nailed it, guys. Nailed it. There's this one out here in the middle of nowhere. All by myself. All right, I'll put one right here. All right, and the last one. Put it all the way over there. You guys, it's already looking so good. Okay. If you've used anything that you feel like you need to go wash right now, go ahead and go do that. My, my stuff is all glass and then um, obviously I just used a, a glue stick thing that it came off pretty easily. Um, so I don't need to, um, but if you need to go rinse anything, do that now. Alright, so essentially what is next is really adding whatever colors you want. So if you have a specific theme that you're going off of or if you just want to kind of do all the colors like I am, that's totally fine. Um, what you're going to want to do though is you're going to want to, whatever you do to one side of the bubble, you're going to want to do to the other side because it's not only reflecting it like like it's reflecting one side but then because it's round and however bubbles work it ends up reflecting it on the bottom too um so it's kind of a crazy optical illusion type thing going on um so whatever you add to one side add to the bottom the opposite side as well um so um hopefully 
you're all back from cleaning things. And if not, then it'll be pretty easy to catch up if, um, if you need to. Um, okay, let's go ahead and start. So essentially, I'm gonna start with some pinks, maybe like a pinky orange. So I'm gonna mix my some of my pink in with my orange. And I'm just gonna and I'm going to put it here. And then you're just gonna do that on every single bubble. trying to stay in the lines of that. And if they don't look exactly the same, that's okay. We're just kind of going, we're trying to do a little bit of uniformity, but if it's not exactly the same, then that's, that's okay. So there's the orange. I'm going to rinse this out and I'm actually going to switch brushes because I'm having a hard time getting in the little tiny brush little tiny parts. So I'm going to go in with my pink and fill in the rest of this. Actually, I think I'm going to add white to my pink so that it's a little bit more um, opaque. And this is a definitely like a trust the process painting um, because it's going to look bad before it looks good. <laughs> okay. Um, but that's honestly, that's with most paintings.
So I'm just putting on the pink and I'm going to just do one color at a time. And if you if you ever go out of outside of your um, bubble, <laughs> if you go outside of the bubble, you can get a clean brush with a little bit of water and just wipe away that. Like your orange or whatever you, you whatever color you used for the outer rim should be dry at this point. Um, so you can you can fix anything you need to. Okay, I'm going to mix this pink in with a little bit of my blue, like a little bit of a purpley color. And I'm just going to I'm going to start putting in a little bit of purple. And you don't have to do all these colors. You can pick and choose different colors if you want. And I'm going to go in with my blue and a little bit of white. Just to make it brighter. I think I might actually even use a brighter blue for this. So I'm going to do this a little bit and then I'm going to come behind here with a brighter blue. This blue is, is nice, but it's not as bright as I want it to be. So we're gonna do, I have a, um, a Master's Touch Lake Blue, and I think that that will be better. Oops, that was a lot. That's okay. All right, so this brighter, Blue. 
And again, I'm just kind of trying to replicate whatever I put on the top, put on the bottom. green in here. And then I'm going to come back here with a round brush and put a couple little dots in different places. On the side here. And then the fun part is when we start putting in our white. Um, and I'm going to use a filbert brush for this. And this is where we go off of the the um, the reference a little bit. You're gonna figure out where you want your highlights, and I'm thinking highlights right here. I'm going to show you what putting a starburst on it looks like. And you'll just do the same thing to all of them. And if you need to go to a smaller brush to add the different details, that's totally fine.
And the little starbursts are essentially you start from somewhere, you're gonna go up, and then you're gonna go from that, you always start from the same starting spot. You're gonna go up, down, side to side, and then you do the same thing, but in between all the ones that you just created. So you do like a, a cross and then an X. And if you want to add any dots, um, you're going to do that by putting white on the back of your um, brush and just dabbing them on. And if you use a liner brush, you can get some pretty small lines for your starbursts if you're not comfortable using the other brushes. All right, and that's pretty much it. You can change up these colors, you can do them differently. Um, you can put the, the blue or the, you know, the pinks and the purples all in different um, areas. I even might here, let's see. Let's see what happens if I take some of my green and I and you can add a different stroke to it down below and up high. So there's really like just so many different possibilities that you can add to this. Um, you can, the initial colors you can do in white or you can do in blue. Um, it's really up to you what you want to do. You don't have to do this middle part. Um, I think I might even come in with some black. Let's see. Make some of these a little bit more black in the middle. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of class. This is a really short class because there's not a whole lot. Um, there's not a whole lot in it. It's mostly black, but um, that was a lot of fun. I think if I did it again, I would try different colors. Um, and maybe you could do a different set of, um, a different set of, like reflections and stuff like that. You could try different sizes of um, glass jars or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you um, if you are not a part of my Facebook community, make sure you go over there. I would love to see your bubbles. I saw a bunch of you um, prep your canvases beforehand. Um, so if you 
did this class with me. There's still currently 24 of you with me. So hopefully at least some of you are painting with me um, or will in the next couple days. I will have a um, full on album of um, of pictures. So in my albums, you can go in there. Um, if you're on mobile, it'll be like the little three lines, like the hamburger at the top. You can click that, go to the albums, um, and then you can add your painting to the album so that anybody else that comes along, they can see all of the paintings that have done, um, that, that have been done to this class. And so that's really fun too. Um, they can get inspired by that. So um, make sure you go and add your photo. You can also find, if it's free, if it's a recent class, then you can find it at the top. It'll be pinned at the top of the page. Um, and you just click the name of the class, which would be Colorful Bubbles. You click that and it'll take you to the album where you can add your own photo, okay? Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining me. Next week, we are painting a... Uh, it's not abstract, it's more abstract realism because we're painting our, probably 95% of our class, we are going to be painting with a palette knife. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you'll join for that, especially if you're afraid of using palette knives. This will be a good class just to get out that fear because um, painting with palette knives is really fun uh, and you don't want to miss out on it, okay? So we will see you next week and have a great rest of your night. Bye, guys.